In this video, we will be looking at coding our states. Remember that a state is nothing but a variable that we are using to control how our object behaves in different situations. We can have one for running away or one for when it is hungry. States are extremely useful in the programming of artificial intelligence. Never assume that just because it's called artificial intelligence that it's actually smart. A lot of the time the AI is still pretty dumb. This is because it's near impossible to cover every situation that an AI might find itself in. For example, if it gets stuck between two walls. Unless you have a check for this, then the AI will probably just sit there. Onto the programming. In the last topic, we set up the variables we would be using, including the state variable. We set state to zero, as this will be our default state. For this tutorial, we will use state zero as an idle state. This means that when the AI is in state zero, it will simply stand in its current location. When programming AI, you don't have to use state zero as an idle state. This is simply for the purpose of this tutorial. We will use state one as a walking state. State 1 will be our most programming heavy as we want the AI to be able to walk up slopes a lot like the player. It's good practice to create mind maps or diagrams of what you want your AI to be able to do before you start programming. This creates a nice plan for you to look back to and check off like a list as you make your AI perform different tasks. Open the AI object, add a step event and drag in a code block. The first thing we need to code is our gravity. For this type, if place underscore free opening bracket x comma y plus one closing bracket, then a set of curly braces. In between the curly braces, type gravity equals stat underscore grav. Beneath the curly braces, type else, and then another set of curly braces. In between those, type gravity equals zero. This is the same as our player's gravity. Now we need to check our state variable to see if it's equal to zero or not. If it is, we can continue with our code. Type if state equals zero, and then add some curly braces to the end of it. Now we need to give our AI object something to do when it's in state zero. This includes a way to move on to a new state. We can use an alarm to make our object change to state one after a certain amount of time. Alarms work off steps. So if you set an alarm to 30, and your room speed is also 30, then your alarm will go off in one second. This is because the room speed is the amount of steps each second that your game performs. While we can set our alarm to be 4 or 5 seconds, with the alarm being the same every time will make our AI object look robotic, as after a while the player will notice the pattern. To solve this problem, we can use the random function to get a random number no higher than the number you give it. This way an alarm will almost always have a different value when the state is entered. Remember that the step event is executed once every step. So we can't just set the alarm as this means the alarm will be reset each step and never actually count down. To solve this, we can check the value of the alarm to see if it has gone off or not. In between the curly braces, type if alarm, then an opening square bracket, zero for alarm zero, and then a closing square bracket. Now lower than 1. Add a set of curly braces to contain our code. This will check to see if alarm 0 has counted down to 0 or not. If it has, we can now set our alarm again. Type alarm, square bracket 0, closing square bracket, equals random, opening and closing bracket, room underscore speed, times 10. This will set alarm 0 to a random value between 1 second and 10 seconds. The room speed variable is a constant variable that holds the value of the room speed. By default, this is equal to 30. With that set, we need to change the state when the alarm goes off. Tick off the code and then add an alarm event for alarm 0. Now drag a code block into it. Type if state equals 0 and then curly braces. In between those curly braces, type state equals 1. Beneath curly braces type else and then another set of curly braces and in between those type state equals 0. Now when this alarm goes off, if state is equal to 0, it will be set to 1 and vice versa. Tick off the alarm code and bring up the step event code again. We need to start programming state 1. On a new line, type if state 
equals 1 and then add a set of curly braces. We will be using state 1 as a moving state. When in state 1, our AI will move left and right depending on the DIR variable. Start by copying and pasting the alarm code into state 1. This will allow the state to change back to 0. Now we can do the actual programming. We will be using a while loop to do our movement, as it allows for us to check for a slope. If there is a slope we can go up, we will change the AI's X and Y position. If not, we will change the direction and go back the other way. Type if dir equals 1 and then add a set of curly braces. Now type var i equals 0. Beneath that, type while i is lower than 12 and add another set of curly braces. In between those, type if place underscore free and add an opening and closing bracket. Type x plus stat underscore spd and y minus i. Now add another set of curly braces. Now type x plus equals stat underscore spd and y minus equals i. Beneath that type break. Now within the while loop and outside of the place free check, type i plus plus. Now outside of the while loop but still inside the dir check, type if i equals 12 then add another set of curly braces. And type dir equals minus 1. Remember to check which curly brace goes with which, highlight one of the curly braces, and its component curly brace will highlight also. So as you can see, we start by checking the direction. We then set i to 0 and start our while loop. We check to see if the place is free, and if it is, we move and end the loop. If not, we add 1 to i and run the loop again. To find out if we have or haven't moved, we check to see if i is equal to 12 by the end of the loop. If it is, then we have most likely hit a wall or the slope is too steep to walk up. We then set dir to minus 1, which switches our direction. Now we need to repeat the code for when dir equals minus 1, and instead of adding to our x value, we subtract from it and move left. In a new line, type if dir equals 1, and then a set of curly braces. In a new line, type if dir equals minus 1, and then a set of curly braces. Beneath the previous dir check, Type if dir equals minus 1 and then add a set of curly braces. Now copy all the code within the first dir check and paste it into the new one. Now we can simply change small parts of the code to suit what we need. The first change we need to make is in the place free check. Change it from x plus stat speed to x minus stat speed. Then directly beneath that, change it from x plus equals stat speed to x minus equals stat speed. And the final thing we need to change is within the if i equals 12 check. Change it from dir equals minus 1 to dir equals 1. That's it for state 1. Now all we need to do is make our AI collide with the ground. Tick off the step event code and add a collision event with the ground parent. Now drag in a code block. This code will be the same as the collision event for our player object with the ground. Type move underscore contact underscore solid. And add an opening and closing bracket. In between those brackets, type direction for the first argument, and then 12. Now in a new line, type vSpeed equals 0. The first line moves the object so that it is meeting the ground object when it is within 12 pixels of the collision. The second line simply sets the vertical speed to 0 and stops it from falling through the ground. The only thing left to do is give your AI a sprite. Take off the code and for now just use the same sprite as the normal enemy. You can now add your AI into your game room and run your game. Within 10 seconds, your AI should start moving. After a little more time, it should stop again and repeat the process. That's it for this video. You should now have a good understanding of states and how simple AI works. In the next video, we will make our AI a little smarter and make it able to attack the player.